Hi and welcome to the channel. So if you're thinking about building yourself an observatory, then this is definitely the video for you. So as a builder of many years, let me show you how to build the ultimate roll-off roof observatory from scratch using my very own design. So I'll share with you some building tips and tricks along the way, and hopefully you'll find this video useful. This is stage two of the series, and it is constructing the concrete base and the walls. So uh, let's get into the video. Now the pier is complete we can move on to the concrete base and here I'm putting in some 4x1 shuttering so the concrete will be four inches thick but it's going to be reinforced with steel mesh A142 six mil steel mesh and that's really going to strengthen up the concrete and stop it from cracking so I've knocked some pegs into the ground and I'm now lifting the actual shuttering up make sure that it's level and then I screw through the shutter and into the pegs when I've got the shutter and level so that'll make sure that my concrete base is all nice and flat and level. So here I'm using my big uh, builder's set square it's just to make sure that the corners of the base are actually square. Well that's the shutter and up for the base just got to dig out the inside now and get it all level and then I'll be ready for the concrete. Right, so I'm getting ready to put the floor in and what I've done here is got some pipes in for cables there's obviously this one going up to the pier coming out the top there and these other two are one for an electric cable coming from that direction and there'll be one from this side which will be an internet cable coming from the house so they'll come up in the floor and they'll be just inside the wall of the building when the wall is up just gonna smash this rubble in, fill some holes up, and then I'll be ready for concrete. Right, so I decided to separate the pier foundation and the concrete base by putting in this layer of fiberglass insulation. So I put down my polythene DPM first, and when I concrete the floor, the floor and the pier foundation will be separated with this layer fiberglass. Now that is to prevent any kind of vibration coming from the floor which will pick up vibrations because the walls are going to be uh, fixed to the floor so any vibrations will travel through the concrete floor. I've also put this foam insulation around the base of the pier so that when I concrete up to it the concrete floor will be completely separate from the pier and the pier foundation. So the steel mesh is in place and I'm now going to mix up the concrete for the base. So this mix is going to be a 4 to 1 ratio, so that's 4 ballast to 1 cement. And you don't want it too wet, but you want it mixed nicely. So a little tip for opening your bags of cement, if you use a decent sized trowel, then cut it down the middle like this and then carefully lift it up from the back like that and push it together and then come up from the bottom with the trowel like that and cut it through and you've got two nice half bags without any mess. So now I'm screeding the concrete. I've already tampered it and it is easier if you've got two people, but as you can see, there's not much room down the side of that wall. So what you want to do is tamper it, which will get it nice and uh, flattened out, and it will bring some water to the top. And then you can use the 4 2 to, uh, to screed the concrete like I'm doing here. And then when the concrete has gone off and the water has evaporated, if you want to, you can float it up to give it a nicer finish. It's not, uh, it's not absolutely necessary, but if you wanted to give it a fluid finish, that's the time to do it when the water has evaporated. So it's gone off nicely, and I'm using a plastic float now to finish it off. 
and you can see uh, the foam around the base of the pier where the concrete floor is now completely separated from that pier. So this is the concrete base all now finished. All nicely flowered up. Just got to let that concrete dry and then I can get on with the walls. And so it begins. Right, I'm starting off by fitting this 3 with 2 all the way around the perimeter of the base and that's going to be the start of my walls, that's where my walls will be fixed to and also you'll see in a later video where I'm going to fill the middle in with insulation and I'm half lapping these corners, that's where you take out half of the timber on each of the pieces of uh, 3 by 2 so when you butt them up together on a corner, they overlap each other. That just gives you a nice way of securely fixing the pieces together rather than just button them up. Um, because they're half lapped, they're overlapped, you can actually screw them together. And I've set it in from the edge of the concrete because I'm gonna clad the outside of the walls with this OSB board. So that's where it's gonna sit. It'll finish flush with the edge of the concrete. Finish flush like that. And then when it's all together, I shall put some cement boards on, hardy plank, which will come down and cover the join. They'll come down to about here, here somewhere. So these concrete screws are really good. All you have to do is drill straight through the wood straight into the concrete and then without removing the wood you just put the screw straight in and screw it right into the concrete no plugs required They're a special kind of screw they grip into the concrete you need a special bit in the end of the uh, drill bit to do the screws up and they get a really good grip And you can see I've got the base timber laid onto a piece of DPC. So I'm going to screw the corners together now. These are special little screws. They've got a cut end so they wind themselves in to the screw without splitting the wood. A little bit like a drill bit end. And they'll go in there. So having a nice level concrete base and uh, a level sole plate for the walls, I can now set up a template and cut all the timber uprights at the same length and hopefully it should still be level around the top. So I'm clamping the template on top of the piece of wood to cut and then I'm going to be guaranteed the same length of timber every time. So you want to build your corners first and then put your head plate on and then you can fit your uprights in between and I've done these at 400 centers. So the walls may look a little wobbly at this stage but once you've got it clad with the 11mm OSB then it will become rigid all the way around. Once it's bordered, then cover it with this felt, this breather membrane, and then I'll put on some 2 by one battens. And this is Hardy Plank cement boards I'm now fitting. So these boards cover 150 mil, so you can work out 
the um, overlap that you need to give you the right height at the um, top of the wall so that you end up with a whole plank. But I had to make that back wall removable just so that I could fit the hardy planks on. There was no way I was going to get down the back there and uh, fit those boards. So I had to build the wall separately and then move into position. So this side panel is in there and it was a bit tricky. Very heavy, but it's all nicely done. Finished off. Put some gravel down the side up against the wall to help the drainage. But that is maintenance free and I should hopefully not have to touch that again. So now I've just got to finish off the rest of it, but at least I can get to all the other sides. It'll be a lot easier to build. Now the construction of the observatory so far is like this. There's a three by two treated timber framework. And these studs are at 400 centers. Then screwed on to the outside of the studs is this 11 mil OSB. That just makes it all rigid. On the outside of the OSB, there's this felt here. It's actually a breather felt. And then over the top of that are two by one battens. You can just see them up there. Again, they're 400 centers screwed onto the main joists, main, main uprights. And then we have this light mist color, color gray cement board, hardy planks. I've used the metal corners for a nice smaller profile. Makes it nice and neat and tidy. Finishes it off. And that's what this side looks like. I've ordered a door, just waiting for the door to come. And I'm now trying to figure out how to build the roof. So I've ordered some wheels and a track. So the wheels will go on the underside of this piece and the track will sit on the top there. And this is the section that's actually gonna slide out like so. So this is the track. This is the 20 mil V groove. You see, that's the shape of it. And the wheels I've got are these wheels. These are 50 mil V groove wheels. And they sit nicely on there. And they're very quiet and smooth. And should work nicely, I hope. And I've bought eight of these pieces. So that's gonna give me up to six meters of side, which is way more than I need. I only need about five meters. And I've got eight wheels, so that's gonna be four each side. So hopefully that will do the job. And this will all be in my next video, which will be me building the roof and finishing off the gable part of the walls, which will be built up to the underside of the roof. And hopefully my door will be in as well by then, so I can install the door and get that all finished off. That'll all be in the next video. So uh, thanks again for watching. And as always, I wish you all clear skies.